The sound in this video was processed by Isotope. In this video, Torpedo Cap M, the new cabinet simulator from Two Notes. Everything we know so far, including the price. We'll open the box, go through the specs and features, check how big and heavy it is, take a look inside of the unit, figure out how much power it actually needs. We'll go through all the menus and functions, listen to what it sounds like, try some different impulses, check all connection options, including the one with the tube amp, measure the latency and take a sneak peek at the new software that comes with it. And it's all coming up right now! Hello everyone, here is Max, and today I've got something really big for you. We're gonna be looking at the Torpedo Cab M, a brand new product from Two Notes Engineering. It was announced literally a few days ago at NAM 2019, and there isn't much about it yet. There's a page on the official website, but it's not in the store and the manual is not yet available. But we know that it comes with 32 caps, 8 power amps, 8 mics, and the best thing is, it allows using 2 mics per cab, and the effective impulse response length is now up to 200 milliseconds. It is much smaller than Torpedo Cab, it can be used with an amp, but it's not a load box. It can be placed between the amp and the speaker cabinet and work as a DI. Another great feature is that it can be controlled from a mobile device via Bluetooth. But at this picture you see the old version of the remote software, the new one is not yet released. Here you can also find the list of cabinets coming with Torpedo Cap M. As I mentioned before, the device was just announced and the only place where it is listed for sale at the moment is Andertons, and the price is 269 UK pounds. So we can probably expect it to be around 300 US dollars or euros. As soon as it will be listed in Toman, I'll give you a link to it in the description below. Well, my unit is actually a pre-sale prototype, as you can see on the box, but I like to think of it as of a once-in-a-lifetime special edition. With that said, when you get your unit, it will come in a much fancier box than this, so just ignore this packaging for now. Inside you'll find a power supply, which provides 12 volts, 1 amp, USB cable, micro USB to USB, this is to connect cap amp to a computer, for remote control or firmware updates. There is also an option to use CAP-M as a microSD card reader when connected to a computer. As you can see, I have no manual here, but you will for sure get one with your unit. So here's the device, let's unwrap it and remove the protective foils, oh I love that! Ok, let's take a closer look at the unit. Here on the top we've got a screen and two knobs, I'll show you later what they do. On the left side there's a headphones output, auxiliary input, DI XLR output with ground lift switch and a line output. On the right side there is an input and here you can connect your instrument or your preamp or even your amp, placing cap amp between your amp and a speaker cabinet. And if you do so, there is a reminder for you, when using an amp always keep a cabinet connected to speaker output. This is because cap amp is not a load box and your tube amp will require some load connected to it in order to work properly. So don't forget about connecting a load box or a cabinet in here if you're using cap amp with a power amp. Good, next, there's an input level sensitivity switch, such as you can attenuate the signal if it's too hot or amplify it if it's too low, a USB connector to connect to your computer or whatever, a power connector and it says 12 volt DC 200 milliamps. Well, we'll check the current later on. On the back, there's an SD card slot. Whoops! <laughs> and the SD card is actually to know it's branded. Look at this. <laughs> Isn't that cute? 256 megabytes. Well, it's not much, but it's enough to hold a lot of impulse responses there. And the good thing is. When you put the SD card in, it is flush with the body, so it doesn't stick out. It was an issue with some devices I reviewed before. Other than the SD card slot, there's also this two notes logo on the back of the unit, which lights up when I connect the power. Let me show you what I mean. Now let's turn off the light. Okay, what else do we have here? There is nothing on the front. 
On the bottom, there are rubber feet and a label that says that it is designed and engineered somewhere in France and made in China. Let's check how heavy Cap M is. It's 440 gram, or almost a pound, which is much heavier than a standard modern paddle, but actually it's just a little bit heavier than a metal zone, or a little lighter than a tube screamer. Cab M is significantly smaller than its predecessor Torpedo Cab, and here is how it compares to other pedals. It is a little bit wider and a little bit taller than this three. We can also compare it to one of the Lipri amps, which is pretty much twice as big as Cab M. Look at this. It actually reminds me of another cabinet simulator I reviewed some time ago, the Iron Cap, which is exactly the same size. And here's the weak spot I've mentioned earlier, the SD card that sticks out of the enclosure. But let's talk numbers. If I press any of the buttons, the device will go into the editing mode, where I can turn on or off individual blocks, like power amp, mic, EQ, reverb, adjust the preset volume level, save the preset, or change global settings. If I press left button again, I will go back to the home screen. And if I want to make some adjustments, I can do it with the right knob, or I can press it to go further into the settings. But let's begin here with the global settings. Here we've got the auxiliary input level, which you can completely mute if you want. This is interesting, latency settings. Now it is set to three and a half milliseconds, but you can reduce it down to 2.2 milliseconds. Or if you want to use longer impulse responses, you can choose to do so, but that will increase the latency to almost 5 milliseconds. Memory card browser, while the card is empty, I can mount or unmount the card right here as well. Bluetooth password, which you're going to use to connect your phone, and you can request a new one. Display brightness, screen saver settings, which is now set to dim after 10 seconds, which you can see right now. Or you can choose another option, for example, sleep, which will turn off the display automatically if you're not using the device for, let's say, three seconds. Just like this. And there's also animation. <laughs> which looks like a real screensaver, actually. <laughs> or you can choose to keep it always on. Here you can see if any remote connection is active right now, for example, Bluetooth or USB. And at the last page, you'll find firmware version and serial number. You can always go back by pressing the left knob. As I mentioned before, there are three different modes, simulation, arcade, and IR loader, and as I switch between them, you can see that those icons are changing as well. You can use these icons as shortcuts to go directly to the settings of the corresponding block. I'll just go one level deeper and scroll through parameters to show you what it looks like. For example, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 different power amp models you can choose from and two different types. This is just the output level, depth, and presence. Here you can choose one of 32 virtual cabinets which come with Torpedo Cap M. 
At the next page, you can choose a microphone model. There are eight of them, and you can use two microphones per cabinet. Level adjustments for mic A and B. Mic position. Distance. Um, front or back of the cabinet. The same for uh, microphone B. EQ. Now there are three different modes for guitar, bass and custom. Custom is fully adjustable. For guitar we've got one, two, three, four, five, five bands. Reverb. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different models. Preset level, and that's it. Now let's see what the arcade mode looks like. Different kinds of icons right now, but if I go, oops, if I go inside, I will probably see different parameters a little bit. Yeah. And that's it. And for the impulse loader mode, you can actually pick an impulse file for mic A and mic B, and everything else is pretty much the same. There are a couple of more things you can do with the knobs. For example, if you press and hold the right one, this will lock the interface, as you can see here, such as it cannot be changed. Uh, so you have to press and hold it again to unlock it. If you press and hold the left knob, you can rename the preset. Now if you turn it on while holding the left button, it will go into the update mode, which is apparently for updating the firmware. As I mentioned before, my unit is a prototype, and even though there are some presets already, I'm not sure they are going to be in the production version. But anyway, let's go through them real quick to get some impression about what this thing is capable of.
notice that when I scroll through presets, volume, which you can set with the right knob, stays the same. So this is a master volume, so to speak, which you can adjust at any time. Okay, now I want to try to load some impulse responses from the SD card, just to check how it works. Well, what is cute, you can actually see the impulse itself right here. Or you can navigate through folders and files on the SD card. Let's talk about the outputs. I was using this line output this whole time, and this is actually a balanced output, and I was using a balanced cable. But you can also use a regular cable like this, it's just that the output level will be a little bit lower. You can also go with the XLR, the sound is gonna be the same. Speaking of the auxiliary input, it is routed to all three outputs in exactly the same way, in mono. Here it is with the line output. And you can always control the volume in the settings. Or you can also mute it completely. Here it is with the VI output. And here it is with the headphones output. And even though this is a stereo track, the headphones output is mono, and this is what you hear. Let's try cap M with a real amp. And for this, I've picked a preset without power amp simulation. Just don't forget to flip the sensitivity switch into the minus 24 dBs position. And of course, if you're using cap amp with an amp, don't forget to connect a speaker cabinet or a load box in here. <laughs> The shortest possible latency with Torpedo Cap M is 2.2 milliseconds, but on this channel we double check things, so let's measure it. I'll be using my standard method, which you can see in many of my videos. I'll give you a link to one of those and I don't need to explain it again. I'm recording at 96 kilohertz, so I'll just record a scratch. And it's 210 samples, which makes 2.2 milliseconds. Very good. Unfortunately, I won't be able to show you how to control Torpedo Cap M with a phone or a tablet, simply because the product is so new that apps are not actually released yet. Even Mac and PC versions are not released, and at the moment they are in alpha testing. And I happen to have this alpha version of the remote, so I'll give you a little sneak peek. Here's what it looks like, but remember, things may change until it actually gets released. Now we've got all the settings on the left, and a nice picture on the right. Here we can pick a preset. And you can see they are changing here on the device as well. You can turn the cabinet around and adjust the mic position any way you want. You can switch to the arcade mode and adjust settings in a different way, or you can load your own impulses. And it's actually working. Whatever I'm doing here actually changes settings in the device. Or if I change it here on the device, that will also change it in the remote.
It is time for a recap, which means we almost reached the end of the video. If you're still watching, don't forget to leave the white range of happiness in the comments. Because if this white monster won't make you happy, I don't know what will. So we've got a cabinet simulator with a flexible latency and effective impulse length. And it has some useful extras, like for example DI output, which is actually phantom power protected. Or a remote control with a mobile device, that's a nice feature to have. And well, it is the most affordable cabinet simulator from the leading manufacturer so far. Speaking of pros and cons, I have to mention the interface. Because even without a manual, it took me just a couple of minutes to figure out how everything works. I really like the fact that the volume of the auxiliary input is adjustable. I'll tell you what, the power of this unit is in the software that comes with it. No other manufacturer offers anything like this at this price point. Speaking of cons, there is no MIDI, and to be honest, I didn't see that coming. It doesn't operate in stereo, and there is no USB audio interface, which would be nice to have. And it is also a little bit heavier than I believe it could be. But altogether, it is a really good product. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, hit that subscribe button right there, and don't forget about the bell button to get notifications every time I'm posting a new video. A special thanks goes to people in the list below. Those are my patrons. If you want to say thanks, hit the button on the left and join the list. Well, that's it for now. Have a good day and I'll see you soon.